So before we begin uh, to build the rocking prop, I just want to say that uh, in the prop parts list, there's a lot of things that are mentioned. Uh, some things, like take for example, the, uh, the 2x6. Um, there's, uh, you know, you don't necessarily have to use a 2x6. If you've got 2x4s on hand, you could probably get away with that. It's going to make your surface area here to build the prop on a little bit harder because it'll be a little bit smaller. But you could get away with that. If you don't have, uh, you know, a piece of, uh, you know, this is a cedar board that I had laying around that I built the, the, the wiper motor prop for. But if you don't have a piece of cedar laying around, you could probably get away with using like um, you know a piece of three quarter inch plywood it wouldn't be quite as strong but it would still work um, as far as the base is concerned it does need to be thick so you know two by four is probably the smallest I would go because you're gonna run screws in it um, if you used plywood for this you'd have to definitely use a thick piece of plywood same thing with this which is the part the mechanism that moves back and forth I would say 2x4 two is best. You could probably maybe get away with a 2x2, two two, although you'd have to use a different hinge, um, but nothing thinner than a 2x2. Two two. Otherwise, you're going to have a problem uh, mounting the linkage. Uh, same thing goes for like plywood. You'd have a really hard time mounting the linkage to a thin sheet of plywood. So I would steer clear of that, but you know, you can kind of vary things a little bit to what you've got on hand. Same thing with the fasteners. There's a lot of fasteners mentioned, um, you know, like screws. They don't necessarily need to be that length. You could be a little shorter, a little longer. That's what you've got laying around. Um, these here look to be, you know, eh, about two inches. Um, but, you know, you could get away with inch and a half, no problem, if that's what you've got handy. Tools-wise, you're going to need um, a couple hand wrenches, uh, for, for this, I need a 10 millimeter and an 11, uh, or it could be a 10 millimeter and a 7 16. But, um, you know, if you're mono using the fasteners you've got laying around, you know, you may need different sizes. But that's just two wrenches. Uh, you're going to need a drill bit set. You're going to need some way of sinking screws in. You could do it manually with a screwdriver, but that's going to be pretty time consuming. I'd really recommend. Uh, you know, a power drill with a, with a screwdriver bit or something along those lines. Anyhow, so we're going to start to build this thing. First thing you're going to do is you're going to take whatever you're using for your base. Let's just assume you're using 2 by 6 You're going to cut this 2 by 6 down to 16 inches long. Okay? Cut your 2 by 6 down to 16 inches long. After you've done that, you're going to need to take a piece of wood. This is another thing that's variable. In this build, so it's, you're going to need a piece of wood. It's about six inches long. Um, it's, this one is about three quarters of an inch thick. Um, again, we don't have to stick exactly with it. Uh, whatever you've got on hand, you're gonna put this on your, you're gonna mount this to your to your base to uh, be a brace for your wiper motor brace or for your wiper motor mount. So you're gonna take your board, cut it to about six inches long. If you've got something wider, that's fine. If it's taller, that's probably okay. Um, and then you're gonna take three screws. It looks like I recommended five eighths inch long. Um, decking screws but I'm probably gonna say I yeah I recommended uh, 13 5 8 inch long decking screws now, I'm gonna recommend you probably go a little longer maybe make them one inches but anyhow don't matter so you're gonna start out by pre-drilling three holes with an appropriate size drill bit for your screws to go through an appropriate size drill bit is one that's going to allow the screw to slide through Okay. Once you've done that, it's time to mount it. It's time to mount it to your 2x6. 
you may choose to pre-drill these uh, with a smaller drill bit so the threads will catch. Uh, it reduces risk of cracking your wood. And we're going to get three of these in. Step once you've got your three screws in, I'll hold it up close to the camera so you can see kind of what it looks like. Um, as far as distance in, you're going to want to go with about what the thickness is of the board you're using for your mount, um, or a little bit more. In this case, I've gone with about one inch. Okay. So the next thing you're going to want to do, we should probably go ahead and build the base for the wiper motor to attach to. So what this is here, so I recommended on the parts list a board that's half an inch thick by four and a half to six inches wide and ten inches long. Uh, a board or plywood, I'm using cedar. Like I said, you could use plywood if that's what you got on hand. The particular one I have is five and a half inches wide and I cut it to eight and a half inches long. I recommend 10 inches long in the parts list. The reason for that is because once this is all put together, we need to make sure that we have enough clearance here for the wiper motor. Um, let's see if I can get you a better angle. Right there for the wiper motor. We don't want that hitting the board. So if you go with something a little bit taller, it'd be more like that. Um, depending, you know, assuming you're using a monster gut motor, uh, this should be sufficient. So next, how I did this was I took the wiper motor, figured out about where I wanted it on the board, and then I laid it flat and pressed on the pressed it down on the shaft hard enough to make an impression in the wood that I then drilled out here. So the hole I ended up with is three quarters of an inch. Once I had that hole, I did the same thing again. I put the wiper motor up to it and pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed until I left it indent for each one of the, um, of the mounts. Now, some people might choose to measure that out. That's totally fine. Um, I'm not very good at that. I seem to always get the holes off when I try to measure them out. So being able to leave an indent on the board. And what I'm talking about is basically taking the, the wiper motor, putting it up against that board, and then pushing on it like so until it leaves a little print. I don't know if you can really see it. It's pretty faint right there but it gave me a spot to drill and like I said once I got that hole through then I did it again for the small mounts another thing you can do if you don't want to push hard on it is you could put something like um, a little bit of paint on each one and then set it down on the board so it leaves little paint marks in fact that would probably work good with this because the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna drill through with the uh, sized for for the bolts those are the mounts the mounting bolts uh, those would come inside your kit uh, if you got it from monster guts so once you've drilled through uh, and you've got three holes that are the size of your mounting bolts then you need to recess it some and the way you're going to want to go about recessing it is if you've got a depth stop for a drill bit, you can do that. Um, if you don't, you're going to have to kind of eyeball it. I don't, so I had to eyeball it. Taking a drill bit now that's sized for the outside of your mounts, about three quarters of an inch, so about a three quarter inch drill bit you're going to go probably three quarters of the way through this board. Some of you might say that weakens the mounts. 
That's true. It does weaken the mounts. But I'm trying to build this without going down to the hardware store and ordering a bunch of special components in order to uh, in, in order to mount this up. I have built many of them like this, um, recessing the the mounts like this. I've never had a failure. So personally, I think if you're careful enough, uh, it's not an issue. So once you've got your three holes going. Then you're going to take right directly below the mounting hole here. And this is how this is going to mount in the end. So hanging straight up and down like so. Right directly below that, you're going to cut this channel out, um, or this piece out. I made about an inch and a quarter cut, and this particular one. It's almost just shy of six inches deep. So what I did was I measured it out, drew my lines, and then on my table saw I made that cut and that cut. Because I don't have anything better, I proceeded to use my drill to drill a bunch of holes across here in order to be able to snap it out. It leaves it rough here, as you can see, but it's totally functional. It's not maybe not the prettiest thing in the world, but it will work. Once you've got that done, then you're going to want to pre-drill four holes in the bottom for your screws. Again, these are going to be big enough for your screws to simply slide through, or pretty close to it anyway. Um, you're going to then proceed to mount it up against that board that we mounted on your 2x6. Hold it up like so. And we're going to go ahead and mount them now. Again, I would recommend pre-drilling into the 2x6 too. Reduces the chance of splitting the wood. I'm going to put four of these in. That's my recommendation. Reason being, you just need a little extra strength down here. Once we've got that down, we already got the mounts all worked out before we bolted this up. So this should be pretty simple. As long as your board is tall enough, it's going to fit right in like that. Okay. Turn it around. You're going to take your mounting bolts. Go ahead and thread those into the wiper motor. And the original, if you got the Monster Guts kit, if you got the Monster Guts wiper motor kit, these are, bolts are going to be 10 millimeter. You can do it with a hand wrench, you can do it with a socket. I'm too lazy to go get my socket, so I'm just using the hand wrench I've got on hand. Remember, you're mounting this to wood, so this doesn't need to be terribly tight. As you can see, um, you know, that's about all I'm going to do. If you hear wood cracking, they're too tight. Okay, we're actually getting pretty close to completion. I imagine you've probably had to pause this a few times, uh, and that's fine. You're going to take... This is another very important piece. This is the crank. This is the wiper motor crank. <coughs> um, if you bought the, wipe, the gut, one Monster Guts prop, you're going to have two cranks in it. One of them's going to have a ball the other one's going to have a hole clear through it. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Hang on. Okay. So if you bought the Monster Guts motor, there will be two there will be two cranks with your wiper motor. One will have a ball and socket on one end and a hole on the other end. The other one will have a hole on both ends. You're going to use the one with the hole on both ends. Um, and you're going to put a bolt through it like that. I used a license plate bolt and nut. Um, let me see if I've got the spec on that here. I say one one inch. Oh wait, no. 
I say one 13 16 inch bolt, three quarters of an inch long. The one I had on hand is a little over a half an inch. I would probably suggest that you go with a one inch bolt if you have it on hand. This is a little bit small and I'll show you why that's a problem. It'll work. It will work, but I'll show you why that's less than ideal here in a minute. So if you've got the one with two holes, you're going to take that 3 16 inch bolt that's 3 quarters of an inch long or preferably an inch long. It needs to have a small head and the reason it needs to have a small head is because as it turns here, you're going to get a tight clearance between the mount here and the back of that. If you've got a big head, they're going to hit. So something like that that's just got a small head, you're going to mount that through the wiper motor shaft that's got um, two holes in it. Now if you have bought your wiper motor from a wrecking yard, it's going to have a ball on the other end. You're going to have to remove that ball. Removing that ball is going to involve a lot of careful cutting, grinding, and pounding to get it out of its original hole because it is going to be um, pressed into place and possibly tack welded or other things but it's going to be difficult to get it out. If you're using a wrecking yard wiper motor, that is probably the hardest part of dealing with that. Um, uh, so again, Monster Guts, really easy. Just stick the bolt through, you're done. You mount it to the shaft like this. Doesn't matter what position it's in, it can be in, does, does not matter at all. Um, there's a nut and a lock washer that came with your Monster Guts wiper motor. I'm going to put that on the shaft. This is going to be a 7 16 nut. Yeah, no it's not. It's going to be a 10 millimeter. You're going to tighten that down. Um, just firm. If the motor starts to turn, that's fine. That's tight enough. You're good to go. Um, at this point now, you've got the wiper motors mounted, you've got your crank on, um, it's time to work on the other end here. So, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your 2x4, um, in my information, I recommend that it be about 9 inches long, and that's exactly it, it's about 9 inches long. You could make it taller, I wouldn't recommend that you go any shorter. The reason being is linkage is going to attach to the side of this. You could go taller, but I wouldn't recommend going any short. So go ahead and take your hinge. This is what I'm talking about as far as a door hinge. Um, you know, this is just a standard, a really standard door hinge. I don't know what else to call it other than a standard door hinge. You're going to attach it to the end of your board like this. I'm going to bring it up so you can see it real close, and you can see how I've got it attached. Okay, so go ahead and attach yours just like I have here. Once you've done that, you're going to attach it to your, your base, your, um, your 2x6. What I would recommend you do if you're building this just like me is go ahead and measure, go ahead and measure out one 12 and a half inches. Mark your 12 and a half inches, and then you're going to take your board, your, your flapper board, your, your 2 by 4 thank you, and, uh, and mount it just right next to the, uh, right next to the edge of your wood. Um, you could pre-drill these holes, probably not necessary biggest thing here is you don't want such long screws that they go through, but you want long enough screws that it holds in place. Um, you know, I'm using, I think these are about one inch screws. Um, use what you got on hand, doesn't matter. Go ahead and drill these in. You can pre-drill a little bit if you prefer. Again, reduce the splitting. Now, there's one thing that I should mention at this point. In some of the builds, 
some of the ones I have built, this is how the original was done, just like this. And some of the ones I have built, I have taken and cut this corner off just a little bit. We're talking, you know, like maybe like there and cut it on my uh, uh, on my table saw. And the reason for f that you might want to make that modification is if you want this to be able to come out further. Okay? If you don't, then it's fine as is. Now this is where we're going to we're going to make the linkage. You're going to need a metal bar. What I've got is a flat three-quarter inch wide 12 gauge bar that I picked up at Home Depot um, at one time. In this case, it's what I've got laying around. It could be wider, it could be thicker, although it would be harder to drill through. Um, sometimes at the hardware store you can get something that's already pre-drilled. Um, pre that might be an option. Some people don't like working with metal, and that's fine. Um, so you're going to start by uh, measuring out what we need to do and you should get pretty close to the same measurements that I did uh, if you've built this the same way I did. Move this into approximately the straight up and down location. Okay, no need to get out levels or anything like that. It's not that precise. Get that in approximately the straight up and down position. Measure from approximately the center of this board to the center of your wiper motor got 11 inches. So you're going to need a bar that's about 12 inches long with each hole at about 11 inches. Um, on one end of the board, or on one end of the bar, after you cut it to 12 inches, at one end of the board you're going to drill a 13 16 inch hole. This is going to be a 13 16 inch bolt because of the size of the hole in the crank. Uh, hopefully you go with a one inch because that will make mounting it a little bit better. On the other end, you're going to need to take a lag bolt um, and pre-drill a hole over here for the lag bolt to go into. Uh, this lag bolt is really long. It's a lot more than you need. This one is an inch and three quarters. You could easily go with just an inch. Uh, but again, I'm using what I've got on hand whatever diameter I wouldn't go any smaller than um, than 3 16 this is bigger so in my case I have two different size holes in my in my metal bar one sized for the crank one size for that easiest end usually to mount first is the crank end um, this is where I have a problem because this is too short so you roll a nut on if this was a one inch, if this was a one inch bolt here, I could roll a second nut on and lock it together. That would keep that bolt from coming apart and falling off. But because I've picked a bolt that's so short, probably what the best thing would be to do would be to put a little, a couple little drops of Loctite on it or something of that variety. Because it's got to be loose because this has to be able to move. So two bolts up against each other would lock those two bolts in place and allow you to have that slack while keeping the bolt from being able to loosen on its own. So that's going to be a problem for this. On the other end, take your lag bolt and pre-drill a hole in your 2x4. You're going to want it to be at approximately the same height as the shaft of the wiper motor. So you can measure up, um, I've got about six and a half inches from the base to the, to the crank. So you're going to measure up, uh, well, apparently I went for seven and a half inches. Um, ideally it would be six and a half inches. Again, this is not that precise. So uh, we go ahead and make our pre-drilled hole, bring our shaft up. This must be the 7 16 Yes, I knew I had a 7 16 in here someplace. 
and then you'll you'll leave this loose so that way the shaft the uh, metal can move you don't want to tighten it too much or you'll bind up um, and you'll just leave it like that this won't have a problem with backing out because the wood will keep a good tight grip on it um, you know if you're stuck with a too short bolt like I am once you've got it done and you know you're not going to mess with it anymore um, you know you could just put a couple drops of Loctite on it to hold it you could maybe shove some JB weld in the end something like that so the last thing we need to do it's looking pretty good huh got our wiper motor uh, we've got our uh, our, our full situation built here. Our full prop. Last thing we need to do is the wiring. If you are using the monster gut stuff, this is going to be really super simple because you're going to have a pigtail that looks like this in your box. You're going to need that. And you're going to have a power supply. This power supply is a it is a 12 volt 5 amp power supply that is ideal for running one of these wiper motors if you sourced one from a thrift store or a PC place it's probably not gonna be a 12 volt 5 amp power supply just because in computers that seems to be pretty rare um, it could vary, but the closer you can get to 12 volts and 5 amps, the better. Um, voltage is basically going to affect the speed the wiper motor operates. So if you have like an 18 volt pack, it's going to turn really fast. And if you have a 10, it's going to turn slow. Uh, amperage is basically the amount of, um, of weight it can handle. So if you have a 2 amp power supply, for example, that might work okay for something that's very light. You might be able to get away with that. Uh, but if you're doing something heavy, the wiper motor is going to stall out because it won't have enough power. It's like having a four-cylinder and trying to tow a travel trailer. It's just not going to work. It's going to overheat the motor. It's going to stop working, maybe burn out. Uh, you need that big V8, the 5-amp unit, to move something heavier. Um, maybe that's something that you know is a good thing to equate it to. Anyhow, but if you've got the Monster Guts kit, you've already got the power supply, and it's ideal. Um, on the back of your motor here, you have five prongs. Okay, it's kind of hard to see here. I'm going to go grab a motor that's not mounted. Hang on. Okay, so just to make it a little bit easier uh, for everybody, I just grabbed a wiper motor that isn't mounted, um, so you can kind of see in here a little bit better. This is the same motor that's on here. It's from Monster Guts. It's identical. Um, so you can maybe see the connector a little bit better in there. Let's get that closer to you. Yeah, so we've got five connections here. The first one... The first one on the left is the ground. You're going to want to connect the red. There's two wires on your harness. One's red, one's black with a red stripe. You're going to want to connect your black with your red stripe to that first unit. Now, you've got a second. You've got, the second one next to it is low speed. Because you remember, wiper motors have two speeds, and on these wiper motors, the speeds are built into them. Some may not be. Um, I'm going to recommend start with low. Uh, you can always switch to high if you want. But low is going to be the second terminal. So you're going to have your black hooked up to the first terminal, your red hooked up to the second terminal. If you want to run high speed, you're going to go to the third terminal. Okay? Pretty simple. But we're not going to do the high speed one just yet. Let me get this power supply plugged in. And, uh, okay, just making sure I did it right. So, on the one that's on the, the wiper motor, or on the prop, because that's the one we want to make move, obviously. Black one. First connector. Red one. 
second connector. You're going to plug this into your power supply. Ah, I fell behind my stuff here. You're going to connect that into your power supply, and uh, this is going to start operating as soon as you plug it in. There we go. We have completed the rocking prop. Now, see, that's what I was talking about. That bolt's too short. But that's okay. Now, in looking at this, this rocks back and forth. What do I do with it? Um, in the original incarnation, like I was saying, we drilled a hole for a PVC pipe to fit right here. So you can drill a hole for your PVC pipe to fit. You can put your skeleton on it. You can put whatever prop you want to make rock back and forth with this. Um, you know, like I said, you can modify it to make a wing move. You can modify it to make all sorts of things move. Um, there you go. Here's the rocking prop.